Hey everyone, welcome to another Corona Quick Tip and today we're going to quickly take a look at how to use motion vector pass in Corona and how to properly apply it in Blackmagic Fusion. So the scene is just a simple scene of a car driving through some tunnel and as the car drives through you can also see the camera kind of rotating around the car. So to set up our motion blur or our motion vector pass you go to render elements, you click add and you pick, pick C geometry velocity. Uh, once you pick the render element you will see some options but in the case of usage with uh, Blackmagic Fusion as well as many other uh, compositing packages the defaults are just fine so you just keep it as this and all you really need to do is just click render. While it renders uh, I'm gonna explain one important thing which is you can only output motion vectors when your 3D motion blur in your scene is off, disabled. If it's enabled there is no way to properly compute motion vectors for meshes. So for motion vector pass to work always make sure your motion blur is disabled. So I'm going to pause the video here and return once uh, the rendering time reaches about two minutes that should be enough. Okay, so we're back. It's about two minutes past. I'm gonna cancel the render. And when we take a look at our render element drop down, we can see the velocity render element is there. It may look a little bit weird, but don't worry, this is how it should look. So now I wanna output it. So let's just hold down save and click save all. And let's name it test 02.exr. And when saving motion vectors, it's always a good idea to save it as full float 32 bits per channel. Make sure no motion vector data ever gets clamped. So just hit OK. And let's go to Fusion. Let's quickly go to our folder. And let's drag and drop test 02 with our render element. So delete this merge node that was automatically created. Here's our beauty pass. Here is our motion vector. So just select beauty pass and let's create vector motion blur. And let's plug our vector pass as a vector input. Now by default you can see nothing happened and that is because uh, the fusion expects vector data to be input as an attribute of the beauty pass. Instead we are using separate loader. So just we need to define that the X channel of the motion vector is the red channel of our input pass and that Y channel is the green one and suddenly it works. By default it's a bit too strong because in the scene we are using just half frame shutter. So let's set scale to just 0.5 and this is it. This is how simple it is to use motion vectors in Fusion. Obviously you can see it comes with sort of drawbacks. We can see that the car kind of blends with the background. In order to resolve it, you would first need to render the background, in this case tunnel, without any car. Then use this rendered sequence as a backplate plugged into the shadow catcher, which would then be applied on everything and then rendered our car inside of it. And after that, we would need to compose it on top of it and apply the motion blur separately to background as well, uh, as, well as foreground. So making sure that post-processing motion blur works correctly and looks good is actually, takes, takes actually a lot of work. If I grab the reference of the real 3D rendered motion blur, and put it in the second slot. So let's put this here. Let's put this one here. If we compare how these two look, you can see there's quite a difference. So in this case, in Corona, the 3D real motion, real 3D motion blur isn't as slow as you may expect. So it's always a good idea to kind of think about if the post-processing 2D motion blur even pays off. But if your pipeline is uh, built around 2D post-processing motion blur or if you use motion vectors for some 
other purposes, then they are definitely available in Corona and this is how you can take advantage of them. So I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.